Hey, it's good to have fun in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. And that's a blessing. I'm so glad you're here tonight. I'd like to invite you to take your Bible and look with me, please, in Mark chapter number 8. Mark chapter 8. Start this new chapter, starting in verse 1. The first three words of the verse say, in those days. And this evening I'd like to share a message with you entitled, in those days. If you would, stand with me if you're willing and able, out of respect for God's word. And if you'll follow along, I'd like to read to you verses 1 through 9. The Bible says, in those days the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat. Jesus called his disciples unto him and said unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from far. And his disciples answered him, From whence or from where can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? Lord, we're out here in the sticks. We're out here in knee-high swamp. Right? Verse 5, he asked them, How many loaves, how many loaves of bread do you have? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break. And gave to his disciples to set before them. And they did set them before the people. And they had a few small fishes. And he blessed and commanded to set them also before the people. So they did eat and were filled. Those three words, and were filled. Would y'all say those out loud with me? And were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about 4,000. And Jesus sent them away. Now may we pray before the message. Heavenly Father, it's been a joy. It's been a lot of fun to be in the service already tonight. We're so thankful for it, Lord. Thank you for the time to sing songs of praise to you and to smile and to have fun and to laugh. Thank you for an opportunity to share blessings and, and burdens, to pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity to read a missionary report, and we pray for that dear brother Stephen Kunkel as he ministers in Osaka, Japan. Lord, may your hand be on him tonight. And uh, may you use him to point many, many precious Japanese souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, Father, it's just good to be with the people of God here tonight. And thank you, Lord. Some of us have been sick this past month. Thank you, Lord, that we're feeling better. Amen. And we can gather together. And we just ask you, we invite you now to preach to your people. And Lord, help us to get out of the Bible tonight what your Spirit put into it. Deliver us from distractions. Lord, we pray that you would edify the saints tonight and that you would save a sinner. Stir our hearts tonight, we pray. In Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. The text starts off with the three words, In those days. Have you ever had one of those days when somebody says well it's been one of those days usually they'll mean something like this it's a day when several things go wrong a day with more than its share of problems a day when nothing seems to be working right maybe a day of disappointment it's one of those days. Hey, beloved, I don't want to discourage you tonight, but I'm going to be honest with you. 
Even as a Christian, you'll have plenty of those kind of days. And I want to tell you why in just a moment, but I just want you to know that right up. Sometimes folks think, well, maybe if I receive Christ or if I go to church, then, then everything will turn for the better and everything will come up roses. And uh, that's just not true. Living on earth, whether you're a Christian or not, living on earth means you'll have those kind of days. Hey, being married means every once in a while you'll have one of those days. All right? Serving in a church means every once in a while you'll have some of those days. Things won't work out right. Problems will rise up. Disappointments. It happens. Interacting with people means you'll have one of those days sooner or later. More than one or two, won't you? Mm -hmm. You've heard me say this before, but my favorite uh, professor in Bible college, he, he was known for being a man of God, and he knew the scriptures real well, but he also had a great sense of humor and really kind of a sarcastic humor. And I remember he told me, I would just go into his office every once in a while just to be around him, just to try to learn from him and, and just to hear some of his, his humor. And at one point he said, Steve, he said, now he's just being sarcastic, okay? But you'll know what he means by this. He said, Steve, he said, this world would be a much better place if it wasn't for the people. Because interacting with people means... You'll have those days, whether it be in the community or at the schoolhouse or even under our own roof, right? Amen. Walking around in your flesh means you'll have one of those days. Why? Why does that happen? Beloved, I want to remind you tonight, we live in a world infected by sin and influenced by Satan. That's one big reason why we're going to have days that don't always work out right, where problems seem too big to handle, sadness and disappointment comes in. Sometimes it's just because sin is at work, or Satan's doing his job, and he can be pretty good at it. That's why sometimes we just have days like this where it just seems like everything's going wrong. We have days, we have those kind of days because the Lord lets that happen so that we will learn, watch this y'all, not to get too attached to this world. If everything was coming up roses, at least in our mindset, we might not want to leave. But God has a better plan for us. Amen? Amen? He has a better place for us. And so sometimes He'll allow frustrations, difficulties, heartaches, just to remind us, hey, let's not get too attached to this place. It really is infected by sin and influenced by Satan. And He allows those kind of days to come into our lives in order to drive us and to push us towards focusing on things above. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, and by the way, if you are saved, you, in God's eyes, you have been risen with Christ. Amen. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things, watch this, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sits on the right hand of the Father. Then the next verse, verse 2 says, Set your affections, set your heart, set your focus on things above and not on things on the earth. And that sometimes is why God will just allow heartache and disappointment and frustration into our lives just to remind us the kind of world we're living in and to remind us a better place is coming. Amen? Amen. Now, in our passage tonight, verse 1 describes one of those days. 
And on, as you read down through the story, in verse 9, it, it says that um, there were 4,000 people in this great multitude. But actually, if you compare Mark chapter 8, verses 1 through 9, you don't have to turn there, but Matthew, if you compare it with Matthew chapter 15, verses 32 through 39, Mark 8 and Matthew 15, those are parallel passages. In other words, it's telling the same story, just maybe one scripture is giving a little bit more information than the other. And in this same story, as it's recorded in Matthew 15, I believe it's verse 38, says that there were 4,000 men besides women and children. So actually, in this crowd, there could have been at least 12,000 people in this crowd. Mark only gives the number of men that were in the crowd, but maybe it would be safe to assume that there's one woman for every man, then at least one kid for every couple. 12,000 people. And uh, verse 2 tells us that they were getting hungry. Look at verse 2 again. Jesus said, I have compassion on this multitude, these 12,000 people, because they've been with me three days and they've had nothing to eat. They must not have been Baptist. Amen. <laughs> hey, 12,000 people, including kids and teenagers, getting hungry, and in verse 1 and in verse 2, both times it says they've had nothing to eat. That would comprise one of those days. A day with a problem. A day with a difficulty. Hey, you know what I'm thankful for tonight? I'm thankful that the story does not stop. I, I, look at verse 1 again with me, if you would, please. I'm thankful that the story doesn't read this way. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, period. That would be kind of discouraging, wouldn't it? Wow, that's depressing. That'd make me want to go out and get a sandwich. But look at that again. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, it's one of those days, but then look at the very next word. Jesus. Hey, we can be thankful tonight that it doesn't say this crowd had nothing to eat but Pastor Steve. I can't do anything about it. We can be thankful tonight that it doesn't say, you know, here's this crowd of 2,000 people. They no, had nothing to eat but Walmart. Walmart would turn around and charge everybody, wouldn't they? Right? But it says Jesus. Listen to this, beloved. It's good to remember that when you're having one of those days, Jesus is near. Remember this too, when you are enduring a problem-filled day, remember this. Look at verse 1 again, please. It says, in those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and said unto them. Hey, when you're enduring a problem-filled day, listen to this, beloved when you've got frustrations and disappointments, listen, I want to encourage you to listen for Jesus' call. When things aren't working out right, when you're having a bad day, and it's not always your fault. By the way, just a little side thought here. We don't want to be the source of somebody else's bad day, right? We don't want to be the source of somebody else's disappointment. And sometimes that kind of day comes our way just because that's life. But I want to encourage you when that happens, listen for Jesus' call. That's the time when he's going to want to connect with you. That's the time when we need him to connect with us, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, he wants... Yeah, this, this, it's one of those days. 12,000 people, including some cranky teenage boys and some hangry teenage girls and some little snotty-nosed kids who are whining because they haven't anything to eat. It's a problem-filled day, but Jesus is calling and says, hey, I want your attention. 
Would you remember that next time? One of those days pops up on your calendar. Be listening for Jesus' call. He's got something to say, even in the midst of difficulty and disappointment and sadness. I remember my dad saying this one time in a sermon, and when he said it, I thought, man, that's good. I can relate to that, and I wrote it down. My dad spoke these words. He says, for too long, Jesus had to listen to the radio of my old heart. I thought that was a very good way of putting it. You know, especially those of us who are, you know, in the 50s, our, our 50s or whatever, or 40s or older, we're used to listening to those radios, aren't we? And uh, sometimes when we were kids or teenagers, we might be listening to it all the time. Now the kids look on their phones someday. But back in our day, they were listening to the radio all the time. And it can just... You know, it could just uh, saturate your mind and control your thinking. But my dad was saying, hey, I'm saved and Jesus lives in my heart. And for too long, Jesus had to listen to all that was going on in my heart. What we want is to have a heart to listen to him. Amen. And see, some of you, I'm going to say this to you in love. But some of you, and I do this myself sometimes, some of you might wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, and your mind's already spinning, isn't it? And you're already thinking about issues and anxieties and worries and concerns. And you're just that, you've got that channel turned to your worries and to what you're thinking about. You've got that radio turned in on your anxieties and on your plans. Oh, God, give you and me the grace to understand to turn off that radio and to listen to him. In just a few moments, I'm going to ask Brother Randy to play the guitar again one more time. We'll have a little invitation. I want to invite you. If you feel led of the Lord to come forward tonight in just a few moments and say, Lord, please help me to learn how to turn off that radio to let you speak to me. It has been, I don't always have these wise moments, but one of the wise moments in my life is when I wake up at 3 o'clock or 3.30 in the morning and my mind is just going over and over issues and anxieties and worries and plans and I just stop and say, oh, wait a minute, Lord, let me open your word. Lord, let me hear from you. I want to encourage you in just a moment to invite the Lord to lead you to turn off the radio of your heart and to listen to him, even in troublesome, problematic, disappointing times. Listen for Jesus' call. Also, when you're experiencing a problem-filled day, look again at verse 2, if you would, please. In the midst of this problem, and it was a big problem, made up of 12,000 parts, right? Jesus said, I have compassion on the multitude. In the midst of all the problems, may God help you and me to appreciate Jesus' compassion. He says, I have compassion. Hallelujah, what a Savior, amen? amen? What a good God. When he says, I have compassion, you know what he's telling the disciples? He's saying, look, see all these people who have been out to here in these sticks with me for the last three days and they've run out of food because they want to they be around me. They want to hear my teaching. They, they want to see God at work. Man, they're getting worn down. They're getting tired. They're getting hungry. I have compassion on them. What he's saying is, he says, I have their hurt in my heart. I can feel what they're going through. I understand. I remember when Brother Brad Waters was here, I think this last fall, for our uh, Bible conference, he described compassion this way, as seeing a need and being willing to do something about it. If you don't have that written down in your notes already, I hope you will. But Jesus saw a need in this chapter. These people were tired. They were hungry. They were three days out in the sticks and away from home. 
I see the need and let's do something about it. I like the fact that it says, I have compassion on the multitude. It, this is not the only time Jesus said, I'm looking at this multitude. And a, a multitude refers to a, I, I like this definition of a multitude here. It's a large crowd of common people. Aren't you glad the Lord had a heart for common people? Amen. I'm one of those common people. Okay? But he said, these, these are just common, ordinary folks. And I care about them. And, and, and look, if you'll hold your place here in chapter 8, and turn back to chapter 6 for a moment, please, and look at verse 34. Chapter 6, verse 30. Let's pick up in verse 32. It says, And they departed into a desert place by ship privately, and the people saw them departing, and many knew Jesus, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and out went them, and came together unto him. And then, okay, so here's this crowd of people. They saw Jesus go across the lake on a boat, so they said, Well, we, we don't have a boat, but we're just going to run around the lake and meet him on the other side. And look what happens in verse 32, this big crowd of people. I'm sorry, verse 34. Somebody be willing to read out loud for us, verse 34. Wallace, read that out loud, man. Use your preacher voice, please. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Thank you, Wallace. That's perfect. The point looking at that verse is we see a couple of examples here of Jesus having compassion on, on a whole crowd of people. Yeah. Just common folks. But you know what's really sweet? We'll go back to Mark 8 in just a moment. But turn back to Mark 1 for a moment. Jesus had compassion towards crowds. But look at Mark 1 and starting in verse 40... I'm going to ask somebody else to read for us verse 41 in a moment, but start with verse 40, okay? The Bible says, and there came a leper to Jesus. Somebody tell us real quick, what in the world was a leper? What kind of disease is that? Psoriasis. That's right. It's a skin disease. Yes. And there's different kinds of it. Some of it can be very deadly. Some of it can be very uh, infectious. And, this, uh, and there was no cure for them. There came a leper to Jesus, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If you will, you can make me clean. And then look at Jesus' response as he just talks to this one man. Somebody read verse 41 for us, please. All right, Miss Lana. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. Thank you very much. Hey, Jesus had compassion towards the crowds, but Jesus also had compassion towards the individual. Hey, I want to share with you some good news tonight. It may have been a hard day for you. It may have been filled with problems, disappointments. But there's somebody who has compassion towards you tonight as an individual your hurt is in his heart amen. that's the savior amen. amen jesus is your friend not your enemy jesus came to show mercy not to make you miserable do y'all believe that? Amen. Amen. Okay. I want to remind you tonight, beloved, this, this Jesus who sees a need and he's willing to do something about it. I mean, did you see that story in Mark 1? The guy had leprosy. I have no doubt he'd been to doctors or been to Walmart to the pharmacy or whatever and, and it didn't fix him. So he goes to the Lord and says, Lord... If, if you'll do it, I know you can cleanse me. Jesus saw the need and he did something about it. That's compassion. And here's the point. For those of you who are saved here tonight. Hey, we got any saved people here tonight? Amen. Amen. 
For those of you who are saved, that same Jesus that we read about in Mark 1 and Mark 6 and Mark 8, that same Jesus who has compassion on whole crowds as well as on individuals, that same Jesus, Christian, lives in you. And you know what? He wants to use you as a channel to show compassion. To show, to bring mercy into a situation, not misery. To bring friendship into an, a situation, not an, an antagonism. Oh, when we have the, an invitation here just a moment, Maybe the Spirit of God would deal on your heart to say, Lord, I know you're in me, and thank you for being in me tonight. I just want to invite you to show compassion through me every day. Our flesh doesn't always want to do that, y'all. Our flesh gets tired. Our flesh gets self-centered. Our flesh gets focused off of the Lord and on ourselves. We need him through the power of his Holy Spirit to show his compassion through us. Let's start by inviting him to do it. Amen. Moving quickly along now. When you're having a problem filled day, like they were having back here in Mark 8, and let's look again there. Just look at the text with me, starting in verse number 2 again. It says, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint, by the way, for divers of them came from far, and his disciples answered him, From whence can we satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? Lord, there ain't no way we can help these people. And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. Y'all, here, if, in order to understand what's going on, it helps to look back at Matthew chapter 15, verse 32, that parallel passage. And there's a little extra detail in Matthew 15, 32 that's not mentioned in the Gospel of Mark here. In Matthew 15, 32, when he's looking at the disciples, he says, listen, guys, these 12,000 men, women, teenagers, and kids, they've been with us for three days now. They've run out of food. Some of them live far away from here. He says this in Matthew 15, 32. He says, they're hungry. I will not send them away. Woo! Woo! I would imagine, I can't prove it, but I just in my heart I want to think when he says, I will not send them away, I think he kind of turns at the disciples and goes, what do you think about that, fellas? I ain't sending them away. And so their response is, what do you want us to do? There's not a grocery store out here. It's 100 miles to the nearest friendly express. Hey, uh, you know what Jesus is doing? He's in the midst of a problem and a difficulty. He's presenting a challenge. And may God help you and me that when we are having one of those days, know that Jesus is going to call us. He's going to want our attention. He's going to want to show compassion through us even when we're having a difficult day. And he's going to present to us a challenge that he wants us to embrace. To challenge means to stir you up by presenting you with a difficulty. And y'all, I love this. The disciples, in, in our text here in Mark 8, the disciples are being given the opportunity to express confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why they should be expressing confidence in him? Because of what happened in Mark 6. Do you remember Mark 6 is when that big crowd, that they were the ones who, you know, saw Jesus going across the lake in the boat, so they ran around on the other side to meet him there, and he taught them, and then he said, hey, let's give them something to eat. And, and the disciples at that time said, we don't have enough money to pay food for all these people. And... Uh, Philip said, well, there's a little boy here. He's got five loaves of bread and two small fish. And remember, in that story, Jesus didn't feed 12,000 people. He fed 15,000 people. 
just using a little boy's lunch. And so when Jesus turns to his disciples here in Mark 8 and says, hey guys, I'm not sending them away. They're hungry. What do you think about that? What they should have done is they should have said, well, Lord, you know, just two chapters ago, <laughs> you, you took a little boy's lunch and fed more people than this. So, Lord, what are you going to do, Lord? We believe you can handle this. But instead, you know what they're doing? Goodness gracious. Look again. They're asking questions. Well, I, I, what do you want from us? What I want you to do is I want you to have confidence in me. I'm challenging you to have confidence in me when, when the day's going bad and there's difficulty and there's problems coming up. I'm challenging you to have confidence in me. I want you to remember, church, what I did for you in the past and I want you to have confidence in me that I'll do it again. Thank you, Lord. Let's just wrap this up quickly. Look at verse 6, if you would, please. In this hard, difficult day, one of those days, look what happens in verse 6. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. Then look again in verse 7. And they had a few small fishes, and he blessed and commanded to set them forth. Here's what's going on. In this day of difficulty and hardship, Jesus is throwing commands out there. You know what he's doing? He's telling them what to do. If you'll just listen to me, I'll tell you what to do. I'll tell you how to resolve this problem. Now, to their credit, to the disciples' credit, not only did they hear what he had to say, but they also did it. That was the key. It was Jesus' job to provide the food. It was their job to distribute it. And bless their hearts, they did what they were told. When we have the invitation here in just a few moments, maybe, dear Christian, God's dealing in your heart. Hey, one of those days is coming your way. <clears throat> Sorry, it's coming. When one of those difficulties come, I believe the Lord wants you to know, be ready. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to give you some commands. Your job is to do what I tell you. So I want to encourage you, when we give the invitation in just a moment, Christians, as the Lord leads you, and I believe the Lord is leading some of you tonight to do this, you come on the invitation when Brother Randy starts playing that guitar, and you get on your knees and say, God, give me a heart to obey your commands. Even in the hard days. It's easy to... To get up here and sing and smile and shout and praise God and obey when things are going good, right? Amen. But when you're having one of those days, Jesus says, I've I got something I want you to do, even in the midst of this difficulty. And then finally, verse 8. So they did eat. I love this. And they were filled. When you're having one of those days, and as you just submit to the Lord and listen for His call and appreciate His compassion, and as you embrace any challenge He might bring your way and have confidence in Him and, and do as He tells you to do, even in difficult times, be ready to enjoy the contentment He provides. Do you see where he filled their bellies? He sat, that means he satisfied them. He met their need. He brought contentment. Listen to this, y'all. Jesus, if you'll, if you'll do what he says, if you'll stick with him and do what he says, listen to this, Jesus won't leave you feeling empty. What's a blessing about that? He won't charge you either. Did you notice when they were passing out the food, he didn't say anything. All right, 
Get five dollars from every person. That that's just he wants just to be a blessing. Amen. He's a giver. Amen. And he can satisfy. You've been feeling empty lately? Do you know the Lord? Are you tuned in to his presence and submissive to his spirit? When you do that, he won't leave you feeling empty. I'm going to ask you if you bow your heads, please. Brother Randy's going to get the guitar ready. I want to have a word of prayer with you. And after we get done with the prayer, Miss Melanie will shut off the camera. You know already the camera's facing this way. It's not facing you. There's a couple of reasons why we do that. For one, we just want to give you the liberty to respond as God's dealing in your heart. But with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you would say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but I know what it's like to have one of those days. In fact, I might have had one of them today. But Pastor, would you pray for me that when one of those days comes again, and it will, Pastor, pray for me that I'll listen for the Lord's call. Good, 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 good. I see your hands. What's even better is the Lord sees your heart. I want to encourage you when the music plays. You come and tell him that yourself. Let's be proactive, not reactive. When times are tough and there's hurt and pain and sadness, look for the Lord's compassion. On a tough day, Jesus was showing compassion. On your tough day, May the Lord give you grace to show compassion, even in the midst of a tough day. May he give you grace to accept the challenge that when hard times come, you'll remember the Lord helped you before, he'll help you again. May you listen for the Lord's command and do what he tells you. Do exactly what he tells you to do. Don't leave anything out. And may you, as you follow these steps, may you enjoy the Lord's contentment as he blesses you with it. Lord, you've seen our hands. You know our hearts, Lord. May your spirit do a work in our midst. Lord, rebuke the devil now. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. If you'll stand with me, please. And Brother Randy is just going to be playing some music softly before the Lord. And Christian, if God is dealing in your heart, I want to encourage you to come. I'm going to move this pulpit back a little bit. Give you room to come as the Lord leads you. You come right now. If you want a prayer, kneel at the prayer bench, that's fine. Or if you want to come up on the front row, whatever it's easier for you. Lord, Lord, I'm in the midst of a, one of those days right now. Lord, help me to hear your call. Help me not to get distracted. Lord, my worries and my fears and my anxieties and my anger it gets in the way. Lord, remove all that distraction. Help me to hear your voice. Give me a heart to do exactly what you say. Lord, here in Mark 8, on a very hard day, you are out there showing compassion. Now, Lord, you live in me. Lord, let your compassion flow through me. Get me out of the way. Knock off of me and knock out of me anything that doesn't look like you so that you can be yourself in me today. Let me be a channel of your compassion. Compassion.
Jesus came to show us mercy, not to make us miserable. Jesus says, I have your hurt in my heart. I understand. And I care. Just do exactly what I say and I'll fill your soul. I'll bring contentment. If you'll do, just do what I tell you to do. If you submit to me and follow me and go my way, I will not leave you feeling empty. I'll fill your soul. And ask Brother Randy to play about one more verse. And if you need to be saved tonight, we encourage you to come. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If you've never been saved the Bible way, make that decision tonight. Wednesday nights are a great night to get saved. I encourage you to come. Experience that greatest birth on earth, like Brother Randy spoke about this past Sunday. Lord, we thank you for this time. In just a moment, we'll be dismissed. But Lord, uh, remember us tonight. And take these decisions that we've made in our hearts and on our knees, Lord. Take these truths and let them continue to tug at our hearts as we leave this place tonight. And as we live in the days to come. We pray this in Christ's name. Hey, beloved, we'll be dismissed in just a moment. I do. God bless you. We love you. We thank the Lord for you. I do want to encourage you to uh, make plans to join us on Sunday. Lord willing, we'll start kicking back into our, our regular routine now that uh, hopefully things have kind of slowed down a little bit with the virus.